Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad in which we would look at a liquidation of a partnership. This topic is covered in financial accounting as well as in advanced accounting. Obviously in advanced accounting it's covered a little bit more in details. It's also covered on the CPA exam, the FAR section. As always I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance lectures as well as many CPA questions and Excel tutorials. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlist. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. Subscribe to the channel, connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources to supplement your CPA exam as well as CMA, enrolled agent, and all of your accounting courses. If you are looking to improve your score 10 to 15 points on your professional examination, I strongly suggest you check out my website. So today we're going to be talking about liquidation of a partnership and simply put liquidation is something we're going out of business. I remember when Borders, maybe some of you remember this bookstore, maybe not, went out of business. I used to hang out in this place a lot when I was younger. Actually, I can't do that anymore. It's closed, but I can't do that anymore anyhow. So what do you do when you liquidate, when you go out of business? The first thing you do is you sell everything. Then you pay off your debt, you pay off your employee, you pay off your taxes, then whatever's left, anything left over goes to the owners. That's the general idea. So this is the big idea that we're going to be working with when it comes to a partnership. So let's look at the specific detail. So the partnership requires three steps following the sale of a non-cash asset. You sell everything that's non-cash. You cannot sell the cash. You can try to sell your cash. Somebody will give you exactly $20 for your cash. But if you have land, if you have inventory, like what borders have, if you have stores, you're going to sell it and you're going to either record a gain or a loss on liquidation, on the sale. What does it mean? It means you sell something, you have a gain. It means you sold it more than its book value or you have a loss. You sell it then less than your book value. So first you have the gain or the loss. And here's where students forget. Students skip over this first step. Once you have a gain, or a loss, you cannot have both, you net them out, you either have a gain or a loss, that gain or a loss is allocated to the partner. So simply put, if you have a gain, the partner's account will go up. If you have a loss, the partner's account will go down using their income and loss ratio. So if depending on the what their income and loss ratio is, 50-50, 70-30, 60-40, whatever that loss ratio is, then your liabilities are settled, your liabilities are paid, you pay off your liabilities, and that's obviously logically how things happen. You sell everything, first you have to pay your obligation, and anything that's after your obligation goes to the partners, goes to the owner of the business. That's basically lo the logical step of closing the business. Now, the best way to illustrate those steps is to actually start to illustrate this in an example. The first thing we want to define by before we illustrate anything is something called no capital deficiency. What does it no capital deficiency mean? Let's assume I am a partner in a partnership and I have a Farhat capital account. As long as I have a credit balance of zero or ten dollars, I don't have a capital deficiency. But if I have a balance of two dollars debit, if I have a balance of a debit, it means I owe the partnership. Simply put, I took money out more than my capital balance. Okay, so the first thing we're going to assume is there's no capital deficiency. It means all partners, they either have a zero balance. So zero balance means no capital efficiency. It means your balance is zero or you have a credit balance, which is good if you have a credit balance. That's basically what it means. So the first example, we're going to be making that assumption. So we have Z, P and R, three partners agree to dissolve their partnership. The only outstanding liability is a debt of 20000 Prior to the dissolution, they have the following balances. So here's where we stand now. They have cash of 178000 They have a land on the books that's worth forty. They have an accounts payable of twenty. Zane's capital is seventy. Perez's capital is sixty-six, and Rashid capital is sixty-two. So the first thing they do, they're going to have to get rid of the land. They have to sell the land. So let's see how much they sold the land for. So began the dis they started the dissolution and they sold the land for forty-six thousand. Well. Let me ask you, do you have a do we have a gain or do we have a loss? Obviously we have a gain on the land. How much is the gain? The gain is six thousand. We sold the land six thousand dollar more than the forty thousand book value. So we have a gain and we're gonna allocate the gain equally. That's how they distribute things among the partners. 
And after the sale, they're going to pay off their liability. So first, we get rid of the land. Then we get rid of the 20,000. Let's take it step by step. So let's first compute, uh, journalize the land. We debit cash 46,000. We get rid of the land. And we have a gain of 6,000. Now, this gain here will have to be closed out to the various partnership. And it's easy. We said it's, it's equally. Therefore, each one of them get 2,000. So we're going to increase Zane's account by 2,000, Teresa's capital account by 2,000, and Rashid's capital account by 2,000. And we get rid of this gain. So this gain is gone. Notice we debited the gain. So the gain is gone. And their capital, each one of their capital went up by 2K. Plus 2K plus 2K. Now the next thing we're going to do, the logical step is to pay off the liability. Luckily, we only have one liability, which is accounts payable. So we're going to debit accounts payable, credit cash. Now what I want you to do, just basically, although I did not mention this, notice we had 178,000 in cash to start with. Then we sold the land for 46. So now we have more cash. Then we're going to pay off the liability of 20. So it's very important to keep track of your cash balance. So we're going to pay off the liability, which is 20,000. So this is, we paid off the liability. So after step two, here's what our cash balance would look like. And our capital balances. Our capital balances for Zane is 72. It started with 70, then we added two. The, the Perez, we started with six, 66, added two. For Tira Sheet, started with 62, added two. The cash balance started with 178, added 46, subtracted 20, we have 204. Now we are ready to distribute the cash. Each one of them, notice because we have no capital efficiency, gets exactly their account balances. Therefore, we credit cash. We debit the capital of Zane, 72. The H per as 68. So this is down to zero, down to zero, down to zero. So we debited all these accounts for the amount and everything is down to zero. Now let's look at an example where we have a capital deficiency. And what does a capital deficiency means? It means in your capital account, you have a partner with a debit balance. Now why would a partner would have a deb debit balance? Well, the partner will have a debit balance for two reasons. Either they absorbed a lot of losses, because remember net loss is close to capital, or they took out a lot of withdrawals. So they kept taking out withdrawals from the business, therefore, their capital became like negative. We call it a capital deficiency or a debit balance. So either losses or or withdrawals. Okay, this can arise from liquidation losses, excessive withdrawals before liquidation, or reoccurring losses. So it, it also could be when we liquidate, they had to absorb a large amount of a loss and they don't have enough capital. Okay, so a partner with a capital deficiency, usually, if possible, they should cover the deficiency. So if you, if you owe the partnership, $10,000, your capital, you have a debit balance, you should come up with $10,000 to kind of cover your capital deficiency. So simply put, if you, if I have a capital deficiency of 10,000, I have to increase my capital by 10,000. So I would credit my capital balance and I will contribute cash of 10,000. So I contribute cash of 10,000, debit cash, credit capital, my capital is up to zero and I'm good. Therefore, I satisfied my obligation. Sometimes I can do it, sometimes I don't. If I cannot cover my capital deficiency, who's going to cover my capital deficiency? Guess what? The other partner. So let's take a look at an example to look at how capital deficiency work. We have Zane, Perez, and Rashid. They agree to dissolve their partnership prior to the final distribution of cash to the partners. Zane has a capital balance of 19,000, which is positive, Perez of eight, and Rashid, notice here it's negative 3,000. So simply put, Rashid owes the partnership $3,000. And Rashid here, here is able to pay it. Well, if Rashid is able to pay it, simply put, here's what Rashid's account looked like before the dissolution. So they had a 3,000 debit balance. Now they credit the, debit, the, credit the capital balance 3,000. They satisfied they can move out. Okay. Now what's left? Now what's going to happen is what's left goes to the other partners. So simply put, we have $27,000 left. 19 goes to Perez, uh, to Zane, 8 goes to Perez. So simply put, Rashid was able to cover his deficiency, which is really good news for the other two partners. Now, let's take a look at when the partner cannot pay the deficiency. So let's assume you have a deficiency, and sometimes you cannot pay the deficiency. Simply put, you don't have money to pay the deficiency. Let's assume the same information, except that Rashid don't have $3,000, and assume the profit and loss is shared equally. So remember, Rashid has a deficit of 3,000. Who's going to absorb the deficit? Well, guess what? 
the other partners. How are they going to absorb it? In their income, in their uh, profit loss ratio, which is 50 50. Therefore, what's going to happen? Zayn has a balance of 19, Perez of 8, and Rashid of negative 3. So, what's going to happen? Rashid's balance will be will be added 3 to make it down to 0. And what's going to happen? The other partners, Zayn and Perez, will basically absorb it. Notice Zayn balance now is 17,500, Perez's balance is 6,500. And the entry will be to, deb to debit. Zayn, debit Perez, reduce their balances, increase Rashid's balance up to zero. Well, why? Because Rashid don't have cash to pay. Therefore, the other two partners will have to absorb the capital balance. And when we liquidate, we have 24,000 left with credit cash and debit, debit their capital remaining balances to close the business. Now, the best way to illustrate this is to actually work another example a uh, little bit more in details to kind of kind of emphasize this and by the way if you want more about this topic please go to my advanced accounting course where you have advanced partnership uh, situation this is basically for financial accounting so we have three partners d g and o um, begin by investing by the partnership as follow d190 g340 and o550 d g and k share of income one to one to two Simply put, 1 to 1 to 2 equal to 4, 1 fourth, 1 fourth, 2 fourth. So it's, let me go back down there, I, let me go down to where I was. See old slide, let me, just I click, I went up by mistake. So what does that mean? It means they have the balance of 25%. 25% and 50%. 1 to 1 to 2. You add them up equal to 4 and you take 1 divided by 4, 1 divided by 4, and 2 divided by 4 to find the percentages. The operation did not go well. Uh, surprise with the partnership. It didn't go well. And the partner, the partners eventually decided to liquidate the partnership. On July 31st, after all assets were converted to cash and all creditors were paid, only $80 remain in the partnership. So after everything said and done, here they're telling you, we liquidated, we we sold everything, we paid off the we paid off the creditors and we have eighty dollars left. Now compute the capital account balances of each partner after the liquidation of the asset and the payment of the creditors. Assume and that's first scenario, second scenario, assume that any partner with a deficit agrees to pay to the partnership to cover the deficit, prepare the journal entries, the cash receipts, and the final disbursement of cash. Assume that if there's any deficit, the person is not able to pay it and record the entry, how the other partners will absorb it, how the other partners will absorb it. So let's take a look at the first scenario. Before the liquidation, this is what we have. We have three balances, 190, 340, and 550. This is what we have. So total equity, $1,080. Well, we are told that after the liquidation, okay, after the liquidation, it means we have equity of that much. It means we have total asset of 1,080. But what we are told after the liquidation, all the assets that's left is $80. It means we, we sold everything for at a loss. We sold everything at a loss. So simply put, what happened is after the liquidation, we only have $80. After the liquidation, we only have, we only have cash of $80. What does that mean? It means we had a loss of a thousand although they're not telling you the loss exactly is a thousand but they're they're giving you that information indirectly so the loss is a thousand dollar what's going to happen these partners will have to absorb the loss 25 percent 25 percent and 50 percent so what's going to happen is each partner will have to absorb 25 percent 25 percent and 50 percent 250 250 and 500 they're going to have to reduce their balances by that much so now Danica reduced their balance, Gaga reduces their balance and opera. Now, notice Danica has a capital deficiency of $60. Gaga still have $90 and opera still have a credit balance of $50. Now, let's look at the, the first thing we said, we're going to assume that they, they, they can pay it. Danica paid the deficiency. It means it's going to give the partnership $60 in cash, which is good. And that's going to reduce her balance down to zero, uh, increase her balance, not reduce it, increase their balance down to zero. Therefore, basically, Danica is out because Danica paid her balance 
okay and the other balance stays the same but now we have 140 dollars in cash what we do next is we distribute the cash of the 140 90 and 50 to the respective partners and we debit their balances and we credit cash to close the partnership so in this scenario the person with the deficit was willing and able to pay it which is good in the second and in, in third scenario we're, we're going to assume that the person cannot pay off so simply put this 60 dollars will have to, to be absorbed by the other two partners now remember it's one to one to two if we took one out what we're left is one to two one plus two equal to three it means it's going to be distributed one third and two third to the other partners so simply put we're going to absorb it by one third once sixty dollars it's absorbed one third by gaga and two third by opera which is 20 and 40 respectively and now Danica's out therefore now Danica's balance we reduce the balance down to zero and we also had to reduce the other two partners because they had to absorb the they have to absorb basically the loss that Danica did not cover now we still have eighty dollars what we do is we distribute the eighty dollars to the partners by debiting their account and crediting cash and this is what we did here now as always I would like to remind you if you want additional resources if you want additional lectures I strongly suggest you visit my website please like this recording um, share it put it in playlist remember farhatlectures.com is there to help you pass your CPA exam to help you improve your performance to help you to help you in your career you invest for your certification once in your lifetime you, you invest in your education once in your lifetime it's going to pay dividend over time take it seriously study hard good luck and stay safe especially during those coronavirus days good luck